Yes, yes, we love you, Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, my God, my God, my God. Good morning, my precious brothers and sisters. How are you doing? On this morning, talking about overcoming life's storms. But I believe the Lord wants you to tell Him yes. Come on, lift your hands to heaven and tell Him yes. We love you, Jesus, my soul. Say yes. My soul, say yes. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes. My soul, say yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Sing it, church. Yes. Come on, lift your hands and tell the Lord yes. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel His presence. I feel His presence. Feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes. My soul say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. I love you, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. So, saints, we love you guys, and we're about to jump into the Word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I go into the Word of God, speak to your people, minister to your people, strengthen your people, encourage them, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, saints, Praise God, I love the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We can worship all day, right? Listen, I want to take you into the Word of God in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27, because we're talking about overcoming life's storms. And I know many of you are facing storms in life right now, challenges in marriage, health challenges, financial challenges, maybe on the job, maybe in a business deal or a business partner, something just went sour. And challenges come to all of us. But when the, when the challenge comes, it's what you do with it, it's how you deal with the challenge. Amen? It's what really matters. And when we look into the Word of God in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27, Jesus gives us some powerful nuggets on what we need to do in our lives to overcome the storms of life. So listen to the Word of God. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, listen to my words, and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Listen to verse 26 and 27. Contrast. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, and no, let me read that again. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and does not do them, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So what Jesus is telling us here, saints, is that storms come to everybody. It comes to the just, and it comes to the unjust. It comes to the saved, it comes to the lost. It comes to the holy, it comes to the unholy. It comes to the rich, and it comes to the poor. It comes to the well, and it comes to those who are sick. 
But the key that Jesus has given us to be able to overcome every storm is our obedience to the word of God. The word of God is Christ himself. I want you to see this is a Christ-centered ministry because the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. So if we love Jesus, we will obey his words. That's John chapter 14 verse 21. And then he says, but if you, he said, if you build your life on my word, on the word of the living God, the storms of life will come glory to God. The winds will blow, the rains will descend, and after the storm is over, I feel like preaching for a minute or two here, I said, after the storm is over, after the smoke clears, and after the dust is settled, you still gonna be standing, because your life is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. My God, this, my mama those used to sing this song back in the church, amen. They, they used to sing on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Are, are you, is your life built on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you walking in obedience to the word of the living God? Because if you are not walking according to the word of God, you are going to be swallowed up in the sands of life but if your life is a life of obedience to the word of God and trying to please God and living a life of humility and repentance before God my God the devil can't wipe you out all the hell can come against you and it can't wipe you out because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 Jesus said upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Obey the word of God. If they laugh at you, obey the word. If they make fun of you, obey the word. Because when the dust is settled and the smoke is clear, you still gonna be standing. Somebody help me give him a praise this morning. Hey, we talking about overcoming the storms of life. Ramando lo babo shata, ambra kasande le bebesa. The key to overcoming life storm, my friend, is your obedience to the word of the living God. He loves you this morning. I believe I'm talking to someone you might never have even surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus. If you haven't, the storms of life is going to wipe you out. If you have already surrendered your life to Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John 5, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. If you are born of his spirit and washed in the blood, the devil can't do nothing to take you out of here. I want you to hear me real good on that. Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Either way I win. My God. My God. But I believe the Holy Spirit have me to encourage the saints and also talk to those who are sinners and not right with God. He wants to give you a chance this morning to build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, Paul says, if a man believes in his heart and confess with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and God raised him from the dead on the third day, you shall be saved. And the minute you get saved, your life is built on the Lord Jesus. My God, my God, all to Jesus I surrender. I feel like pulling the, the net of salvation this morning. I believe the Holy Ghost is talking to you, my friend. Mr. Who've been cheating on his wife. You that's been stealing from your boss on the job. You that's been running a crooked business and doing stuff that's contrary to the word of God. Ripping people off. Getting people into debt. Taking advantage of vulnerable people. The Lord Jesus is calling you this morning. He's calling you to get right. He's calling you to repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to be judged before God. And we're going to be judged based on what we did with the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you accept him or did you reject him? God is calling you this morning. Without any hesitation, without any, without even prolonging this another second, I want you to bow your head and pray the sinner's prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I need your forgiveness. Your word says, whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall 
be saved. Forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. God, I believe in my heart this morning. And I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. You shed your precious blood on Calvary that I might be saved. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness from this day. I surrender, not my will, but from this day forward, your will be done. And I want to encourage every child of God that's listening to this broadcast. Stay safe. Stay close to Jesus. Keep obeying his word. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how tough the test may be. If you are walking in obedience to the word of God, when the storm is over, you'll still be standing. When the storm is over, you'll still be breathing. I love you, my friend, and I pray that the Holy Ghost will touch you. I pray the Holy Ghost will strengthen you. I pray that the Holy Ghost will lift your spirit up this morning and let you know that Jesus said, those that are in the Father's hands, no man, no man, no man can pluck them out. Those that are in the Father's hands, no man can pluck them out. God is on your side, child of God. And I want to say, if you didn't have a chance to subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe by clicking on that red and white button on the bottom right side of the video. If you're watching us through Facebook, follow us on Facebook. Send us a friend request on Facebook. We'd love to have you a part of our Facebook family and a part of our YouTube family. And remember guys, we love you, but we need your support. We can't do this without your help. It's not about money. This is about Jesus. But reality is we cannot preach the gospel without money. It takes money. Amen. To do what we are doing. We've surrendered it all to Jesus. And you know we love you guys. We appreciate you. That's why we tell you the truth. That's why we love on you. That's why we pray for you. That's why we encourage you. And I'm talking to someone this morning. You will overcome life storms. You will outlast this storm. Not because of you, but because your life is built on the word of God. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God will stand forever. We love you guys and we look forward to being with you again on tomorrow morning as we talk about the power of praying in tongues. As we talk about the power of praying in other tongues. Many of you have requested that we do a teaching on the power of praying in tongues. And I'll probably just whet your appetite. And I will have to go far more into detail on one of the Thursday night or Sunday night live broadcasts once I'm done teaching on the whole arm of God. We love you guys. God bless you. I look forward to being with you again on tomorrow morning as we talk about the power of praying in other tongues. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.